something really exciting going on right now. So here comes the steps. We got that one coming in here, then this one coming in here. We'll have some boulders in here, which will kind of redirect you. This was the part I've been really looking forward to. That water is gonna be just like ripping underneath these things, which is gonna look so awesome. Chris! That's a big rock. <laughs> Chris and I have been looking at this rock since it came and all we've ever wanted to do is build a stream that looked like solid bedrock came in through here. And so I think we've got the opportunity to put this in. It'll help hide some legs in our bridge and just look awesome as water drops off of this fall, comes down, creates a pool and then rolls that way. Right? It's gonna look awesome. Yeah. We are back out here on our Downers Grove project, the formal rec pond. We've taken a couple days off. We had some serious rains over the course of about two or three days. So we had to let this entire area kind of dry out. We had a significant amount of cleanup that we had to do here in our reservoir. Some of the sides started to fall in and all that kind of stuff. So we wanted to make sure when it was raining, we didn't have anybody down in the hole just in case anything were to happen. But now that it's dry, it feels like I'm standing on concrete. You can see how it's even all cracked and everything. That clay dries right up. We've got a little bit of water down there in the pump vault area, but I just wanted to take a second and explain what is going on. We had a trench that we dug right around here and it is filled with a six inch perforated corrugated drain tile and that's going to be part of our under drain system. There will be an overflow pipe that's about three feet down. This pipe will end up being in the same trench and we're going to run a sump pit back over there. So that's why that perforated drain pipe is sitting right there because we're gonna bring it up between the outside of the reservoir, that liner fabric holding back the aqua box, which maintain this area, and the sand, which we will fill all four sides all the way around to lock everything together. But that drain pipe will run right up the side in between the liner and that wall. And then as we're filling with sand, we want that pipe to stay vertical. And then we'll end up elbowing probably somewhere around there and then shooting a trench straight back over there to a sump pit along with our overflow pipes. That's what's happening right now. We've got sand on the bottom to level everything off, clean up all the crap that was down there and just get a nice soft but firm level base for us to set our liner and everything on and then the aqua blocks inside of it. So we're gonna go with fabric, liner, fabric, and then our aqua blocks and pump vault. And then we'll fold everything up like a burrito and then backfill all four sides with sand to fill that void space outside. Cause we over dug the hole probably a foot on every side uh, in order to compensate for moving these aqua blocks back and forth. With that said, we are going to get the fabric in now, then the liner, which is going to be a bear, but we're gonna make it work. As you saw earlier in the video, we're no stranger to moving big liners and making light work of it. So this will be a 50 by 80 foot piece of liner, which is even bigger than the one we used in the pond behind me. We wanna try and make this all one piece in through here, not only in the reservoir, but we want that to kind of wrap up back through here with our stream, so on and so forth. So today's gonna to be a challenge. We're down a couple of guys, but we're gonna make this thing work.
exciting going on right now. So here comes the steps. We got that one coming in here, and this one coming in here. We'll have some boulders in here, which will kind of redirect you. This was the part I've been really looking forward to. That water is going to be just like ripping underneath these things, which is going to look so awesome. Chris! Hi! That's a big rock! <laughs> <laughs> Chris and I have been looking at this rock since it came and all we've ever wanted to do is build a stream that looked like solid bedrock came in through here and so I think we've got the opportunity to put this in it'll help hide some legs in our bridge and just look awesome as water drops off of this fall comes down creates a pool and then rolls that way right it's gonna look awesome. yeah Wow, by popular demand, we are going with sand on the bottom of this wreck pond. As you can see, I've got a pile of sand behind me. So we're gonna move some wheelbarrows here and get that bottom filled with sand so that we can start filling this thing with water. And then hopefully, within the next 24 hours, we can get this thing up and running. Let's go! So you can see it does. Well, we got Brian and Matt, Corey, the rest of the gang, filling the bottom with sand. What do you think, B? Extremely nervous, but maybe more excited. I don't know if it's like a 60, 40, 40, 60. This is really the first time we've ever put sand down in the bottom. I know a lot of our CACs, the overall sense this was like we love that you're trying it first <laughs> just to see if it worked it's gonna make the pond look incredible we kind of talked a little bit yesterday should we do sand or black chips I know um, I talked to the Ox out there in California and they were asking for an idea on uh, black chips and something soft on the bottom and I said if you can get tiny tiny black chips it'd be great well they can get black chips that are about the same consistency of the sand right here and so I would have liked to use that we can't get that that small the advantage to a black chip on the bottom would be it gives it this endless depth kind of like a a black liner in a pool. It also hides some imperfections. The advantage to sand, kind of a whiter background, is it's gonna make this thing look super, super clean. And we've got so much filtration on this pond that it's gonna be spotless. But when a leaf falls on the bottom, you're gonna see it right away where the black chips would have hidden it. But I think we're fine with the enormous amount of circulation from the bottom, from the top, with the wetland filter, the waterfalls, the different jets and everything else, we should be in pretty good shape. I guess I'm really excited because after 25 plus years of doing this, this is 25? This is the first time we've ever done sand on the bottom. Here's what I know. It's okay if it's thin. What you don't want the sand to do is be five inches thick. If it's too thick, it can get anaerobic underneath. No different than gravel. Like when we put gravel in the bottom of the pond, it's really not there. It's there for a little bit of aesthetics, but if um, it's really to aid the growth of bacteria and everything else. And you'll get healthy bacteria growth in the bottom of your gravel if it's thin, because oxygen can get down in there. If it's thick, you get anaerobic conditions. Same thing is gonna happen with sand. And that's why we only have it on the bottom. If I put sand throughout everything, that sand would eventually migrate down to the bottom because those koi are gonna constantly pick it up and spit it down here. And then I start getting five inches of sand to six to seven to eight, you know, so on and so on. So the key is to keep it really thin, nice and level. And I think it's just gonna be an awesome look for the pond and really aid in the filtration. I think it looks sexy. And it looks pretty sexy. Mm -hmm. Well, we are at the start of yet another day out here on this large rec pond project. As you can see behind me, we have water, which is always an excellent sign. So the customers came by yesterday and turned the water on inside the house so that we could start rinsing everything down on the pond portion of it and get this thing filling. So that's a big step. We also have our 6,000 gallon reservoir being filled as we speak as well, just to get that water in there so that we don't have to worry about storm water or, or any kind of torrential rains potentially messing up that empty reservoir. I'm gonna turn the camera on and show you kind of where we're gonna start today. So we left off yesterday. We've got a couple of the steps set that are leading down from the upper patio, which is sitting right up there where the excavator is. I think we're gonna focus on this section and then we will hop over and start building that wall that's going to support the patio that's underneath that pergola structure that is going to sit right in here. So we'll kind of work our way back this way. Sounds like tomorrow we've got all the dirt that is staged in the front of the house being taken out of here. So I'd really like to get to digging the bog maybe tomorrow so that I can get that dirt out of here as well while they're doing that. So the guys are working on building a couple, I guess you would call them pedestals or feet to support the backside of these bridge and step elements. We've got this massive stone down in here and what we are going to do is create almost this bedrock type look at the base of the stream, getting water to swell up in here and kind of have it deeper water before it rolls over that rock and goes out and squirts underneath this bridge step element. So again, reservoirs back over there. Here's our fire pit area turn the camera around and show you water we have that is the footprint right there of our aqua blocks what do you think 
think, should we still put a sphere back there? I'm not 100% sold on doing a sphere there. I like one more element, but they don't need another element. Mm. There's plenty going on. We've got about 17 I of them. I guess you guys won't know until the very end. Mm -hmm. So they're actually not gonna know a lot of things, like the way the water rips through here, the way it comes over that rock. Whether or not we do a sphere, they're not seeing the lights. They're not seeing a lot of stuff. Which um, is why they're gonna have to tune in to the next episode. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs>